Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K YouTube Live. And today I'm gonna to show you how I made a card with the cute little Friendly Gnomes stamp set from the upcoming, um, it'll be January to uh, April 2023 mini catalog. And I see that I'm still crazily crooked. I don't know why I can't ever get this right. <laughs> but someday I'll get it figured out and then I'll forget where I put everything. So, all right, so we are gonna today play with a fun new stamp set. Again, like I said, it's the Friendly Gnomes uh, photopolymer stamp set from the upcoming July, or July, what in the world? January to April 2023 mini catalog from Stampin' Up. So hey, Karen, thanks for hopping in today. So this is the card. It's cute, I think. I love the little gnomes. I know some people don't love them. And isn't it? I mean, the little gnomes are just too cute. I can't help myself. <laughs> like I said, I know there, there's like two camps of gnome people. You either love them or you really don't love them. And I'm in the I love them camp. I can't help myself. So, all right. Hey, Pam, thanks for joining. So this is what we're going to be making today. And like I said, one of my customers said, you know, I'd really like to see that new gnome stamp set made and turn it into a Valentine's Day card. And I did it. So here it is. <laughs> so, hey, Marilyn and Jeanette, I'm glad that you're here today. So let's start with the stamp set. This is the Friendly Gnomes stamp set, and it is really cute. And like I said, um, and I'll show you in a second why I really love it. Uh, it's the dyes. But uh, so anyway, so it's got some cute little sentiments in it, some spring images. It's got the little guy with a heart for Valentine's Day. Um, there's a balloon for birthdays and a birthday sentiment, which I love. Um, so little critters. So it's a really cute set. It's photopolymer, so it's easy to stamp with, which I also love that part. And then we have the dies, which are currently available in the mini catalog that is retiring. The dies are gonna carry forward and be around for at least a little while um, during this next catalog. So be sure you're getting the dies because the dies coordinate with the new stamp set as well. And they pick up the old stamp set if it's still available um, while you're at it so that you have all of them and can mix and match all of your uh, stamps and dies and make Christmas and fall and all sorts of fun things. So there. <laughs> So just get it. All right. So this, uh, like I said, this is in the die set is in the current mini catalog, which is the July to December 2022 mini that is retiring on January 4th. Um, so these dies are going to carry forward. However, that stamp set is not. So the one that it currently is is uh, bundled with in the catalog is not going to be around anymore. The one with the little Christmas images in it. So be sure you're getting both of them because you're going to want them. And just trust me, just get them. <laughs> All right. Um, one other thing that I used on this is um, probably my second favorite, or maybe depending on the day, my favorite die set, these Stylish Shapes dies. I used the little banner die to cut out the little banner sentiment on the card front. So that's all that I used for, um, I don't know, pieces other than cardstocks, inks, you know, the basic stuff. All right, let me get the stamp set out of the way. A um, couple things to talk about. Yay, Stampin' Up! just announced free shipping. So, hey, Susan from Chili Green Bay. It's chilly in, in New Jersey today, too. I went, <laughs> stuck my head outside, and yeah, it's cold. So, um, free shipping from Stampin' Up! on Thursday, December 15th only on orders of $75 or greater. So, if there are things speaking of the gnomes, things that you haven't picked yet, up yet from the retiring catalog that you were wanting, um, go get them on Thursday and get free shipping if your order is $75 or greater. So that's an awesome deal. Um, shipping, I will warn you right now, Stampin' Up! is running behind on shipping, so do not expect to get your order before Christmas um, if you order on the 15th. They are now kind of plowing through all the orders from earlier in the month, and I know there's it's a huge delay shipping, but they are hopeful to be caught up, hopefully within the next um, week or so. So like I said, it got a little crazy on the first. <laughs> so, all right, don't forget 15th free shipping on any order of $75 or greater from Stampin' Up! Uh, Last Chance products, I was just talking about those as well. So anything in the current mini catalog, which is the July to December 2022 mini catalog, um, that's on the retiring list is only available while supplies last. So any of those items, uh, make sure you're getting those. And again, if you're, you know, we've got the free shipping offer happening. So pick up your last remaining things uh, before they're gone for good um, here in December. Um, the Last Chance Products ends on the 4th of January when the new catalog ordering starts. And then I have my designer series paper shares for the upcoming January to April 2023 mini catalog. All the details are on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. So you can head out there and find it. I've got a little tab that's marked as designer series paper shares. So go take a peek at it um, if you are 
interested in getting a nice sampling of all the upcoming designer series papers from the new mini catalog. Let me know if you have questions on anything. Again, my blog is stampwithamyk.com and I'll be posting all the details for this card um, out there tomorrow as well. So no need to worry about um, writing down measurements or anything like that. So let's get going after all that yakking. So I see, I'm glad that it's not just me, Roxanne, that loves the gnomes. I can't help myself and I don't even know what it is that I like about them. I just think they're way too cute. <laughs> so, hey, Julie, good morning. Good afternoon from here in uh, uh, New Jersey, but you must be in a way different time zone than me. So, all right, so we're gonna start with, um, I've got Dandy Designs 12 by 12 Designer Series paper. That's where these two papers actually, well, it's the same paper just different sides of it. That's where this paper came from that we're using on the card front. Um, where did you find the dandy designs? It is in the Celebration brochure from Stampin' Up, which Celebration also starts on, or on uh, January 5th uh, when the new mini catalog starts. And um, the way Celebration works is that for every $50 or $100 that you order from Stampin' Up while Celebration is going on from January 5th through the end of uh, February, you get to pick a free item from their celebration brochure. So, you know, how much better does it get than that? Uh, free, there's lots of free paper in there, some free stamp sets, so lots of good things um, coming up that will be available for free. And this is actually one of the items that you can get for free is this pack of paper. It is a huge pack. It's 48 sheets, uh, 12 by 12. So it's one of those, it's like an inch thick and huge pack of paper um, and it's full of like all of my favorite colors and I'm not even a huge purple fan but I don't know what it is about this color scheme but I really like it <laughs> all right um, so I've adhered this to the front of a thick basic white card base this panel was four and a quarter by five and a half and again just stuck it with multi-purpose liquid glue to the card front and then I cut a smaller piece of this this is about three and three quarters inches wide by about four I'm sorry three and three eighths wide by about four and three quarters wide tall wide, whatever, three and three-eighths, four and three-quarters. So we're going to take a little stamp and seal, and we are going to adhere this to the card front. And I love all the colors in this. Like I said, it's they're perfect for spring, Easter, um, I don't know, birthdays, everything, I think. So. Uh, so this has got little dots and lines on it, which makes it a little easier to line up, but also makes it so that you really want to make sure it's lined up and fairly straight. Otherwise, it's really probably going to be more obvious that it's not. Um, and hopefully I get it fairly centered. And if not, it's okay because most of it's going to be covered um, by the, the um, focal panel anyhow. All right, next up, we're gonna do a little stamping. We're actually gonna stamp the little gnomes first. And I did one ahead. I did the little boy gnome ahead um, just because it's the same coloring technique that I'm using. And I just didn't want you to have to sit and watch me color two entire gnomes and the mushroom and the, you know, everything else. So um, starting with Tuxedo Black Memento ink, that is the um, ink that we stamp the images in. And again, I've got the little girl gnome. This is from the Friendly Gnomes stamp set. This um, set will be available in the mini catalog starting on January 5th. So um, it's a new set, new catalog, all sorts of fun new things in it. And again, Tuxedo Black Memento Ink works fantastically with Stampin' Up's Stampin' Blends. And I've used a couple of different colors in here. Um, and a color lifter as well. So again, like I said, the little boy gnome, I've colored him, um, but I'm gonna color her, it's same, same color scheme that I used on him. It's balmy blue for his pants, um, gray granite for the beard, uh, petal pink for the little heart. The hat is fresh freesia. Uh, the shirt is mint macaron. And then I use the medium light Stampin' Blends colors to color in his little nose. So. That's what I used on him. And uh, let me get started coloring her. All right, so I'm gonna start with Fresh Freesia. Whoop, I usually use the bullet point tips. I don't know, I'm, I have better luck staying inside the lines with those than I do with the, um, the brush point. Depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I'll switch to the brush one, but I have better luck with the little um, point that's a little more narrow because I get a little um, wild in my coloring sometimes. So when I'm coloring her little hat, I basically did the outline first and I'm gonna to try to go around the flower to try not to color too much purple on it, but it's okay because it's blends. If you do get a little ink on it, um, you can blend it away when you add the next color in. And I'm just gonna to try to get a layer of color over most of the hat here. And I'm gonna leave a little white spot down the middle um, just to, I don't know, that to me it looked like a reflection on their little hats. 
So I'm gonna leave a little white spot and then I'm just gonna take my Stampin' Blends and sort of flick the ink over it so I'm not gonna completely cover it. And then I'm gonna take my color lifter and again, I use, I find that the bullet point end of it works better for me when I'm color liftering, <laughs> if that's a word. And then I'm just gonna color over that same area and blend away, hopefully, any sort of um, yucky looking streaks or anything like that in it. And just sort of blend in a little bit and it, it just adds a little highlight, low light kind of look to the hat. So that was all I was trying to do. Um, when you're using the color lifter, what I usually recommend is color it first, color over it with your color lifter, and then give it just a second to dry because it continues to lighten as it dries. And you may see that there are areas that you maybe don't want to have any more lightening done on in some areas where you may want to add a little more color back in um, or areas where you may want to lighten just a little bit more. So I'm going to actually take my blends marker here and just sort of come back in and... Sorry about that. Goodness. Um, a little bit... Uh, a little bit of uh, color back on there. So hopefully we're back on again. All right. And I think we're going to call it good for her hat. Then I'm going to grab mint macaron here. I've got the light mint macaron. And I'm going to color in her dress with that. All right. And again, I just use mostly the light colors on this. Um, I don't know why. I guess I thought it looked more springy. And on top of that, they're cute little images, so I didn't feel like I needed to do a ton of really detailed coloring on them. Um, just kind of wanted to get color on it, and that was really about it. So I didn't spend a lot of time blending other than putting a little um, highlight on her hat and his hat and coloring their hair a little bit with a color lifter. That's all I really used it for. All right, so we've got her dress done, and let me color her collar on her shirt. This is balmy blue. Again, I'm using the light balmy blue, and then I made her little socks match. I don't know why, <laughs> but I did. And then I'm gonna bring back Fresh Freesia. So, hey Deb, thanks for joining, and I'm glad that you're liking the little gnomes. Oh, I appreciate that, Rosie, thanks so much. So. All right, um, oh, I forgot her little, um, she has a little few more details than he does on her, her clothes. So she's got the little um, ruffles around her wrists here. I have to color those in. And then I'm gonna do the Fresh Freesia, again, the light Fresh Freesia on her shoes. So let me get that put on there. And then we'll come back in and color the balmy blue that I forgot on the little ruffles. So. All right, and again, just using the light Stampin' Blends. And what else do I need to do? I need to color her hair a little bit. So I have got light gray granite, and I did the same thing on the other little gnome's beard. So I'm gonna use light gray granite to color in the soles of the shoes. And then little dots on the top of the shoes. I don't know for sure if those are buckles or what they're supposed to be. So, hey, Yvonne, thanks for hopping in from Missouri. So it's such a cute set. You're gonna have so much fun playing with it, so. All right, um, then I'm going to color in her hair here with the light gray granite. And then I'm gonna come back in with the color lifter and color over the top of her hair and kind of blend it and make it look, it turns it back kind of almost white again, but not quite. I didn't want it to be bright white, just wanted it to be a little lighter, that's all. All right. Hang on a second. I know, and gray hair. <laughs> see, she's matching me. So, um, let me see. Uh, I think we're all right. Okay, I thought there was somebody on here. So, okay. Um, the other colors that I used were on her face, and I realized I forgot to color the hat, the little flower on her hat, too. So, I've got the SU-800 and SU-700, which are the um, light, medium light um, skin tone blends markers. So I'm going to use, uh, let me make sure I'm using the right one. Whoop, that's the darker one of the two, I think. Yep, I think that's the darker one. So whoop, let me color in. This one is SU-800, and I'm just going to color in all of her face with it, and hopefully I'm coloring it with the right one, and it doesn't matter, I guess. She can have a little different skin, skin color than he does. And then I uh, came back in with the other one and added just a little bit of shading around the edges of her face, underneath her nose, and kind of up near the hat. 
And I did the same thing on his little nose. Um, so just colored his in with the SU-800 and then used the SU-700 to put the little, a little bit of, um, I don't know, shading around the edges, uh, edges of, of his nose. And I'm not entirely sure that you can even see it very well on film, but hopefully you'll be able to see it tomorrow when I share my little project on my blog. And then let me grab Petal Pink. Do, do, do. Here we go. Dark Petal Pink. And we're going to color in the flower on her hat. And then the flower center I did in the mint macaron. All right, there we go. And that's it for her. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp the sentiment, which is the love you sentiment from the Friendly Gnome stamp set in um, Fresh Freesia ink. And just gonna stamp it here on the same piece of paper so that I can die cut them both at the same time. I'm gonna grab my Stylish Shapes dies, small spanner is the one we're going to cut out the sentiment with. And then I've got the little gnome dies, and make sure I've got the right one for her here. And we're just going to take the gnome dies and die cut her image out here as well. So I'm going to be off screen for one second, and um, my voice will fade away a little bit, but I will be back, I promise. So hold on one second, and I'll be right back. Hopefully it'll only take me a second. All right, maybe. Oop, almost had it back. See, this is what happens when I try to cut two of them at once, so. All right. Come on, guys. Should have just given up and cut them both at the same time, or both at um, different times, but oh well. I got them both. <laughs> so, there we go. And got the little sentiment die cut here. And then I'm going to put this off to the side and uh, back on the magnetic sheet before I lose track of everything. And then the next thing that I did was I kind of placed this piece of basic white cardstock, um, is about. Uh, two and what did I said two and three quarters by about five and a half inches and I just put the little gnomes on here to start with to sort of figure out where it was that I wanted my background images to land so I've got the little girl gnome on here got the little boy gnome on here um, got the little mushroom and I'm going to grab my tuxedo black memento ink and this is a little mushroom house and hang on a second all right so inking that up with Tuxedo Black Memento ink, and then I'm just going to scoot her over a little bit, and we're going to stamp this here on the basic white cardstock. All right. And then I'm going to take my little, um, this is the little Blades of Grass image. Also going to stamp that in Tuxedo Black Memento ink along her other side. So again, just kind of generally wanted to know where she was going to land. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the little boy gnome, stamp the Blades of Grass next to him as well on the basic white panel, and then I'll slide those out of the way and cover up my ink pad before I end up making a huge mess. And then grab my stamp blends again. So I've got light uh, mint macker on, and that's what we're coloring the grass in with. And again, it doesn't need to be perfectly colored, so I did not spend a ton of time uh, coloring and shading and all that sort of thing. Just kind of wanted to get color on the, the images here. And then I'm coloring the, the um, blades of grass and the stems and the leaves kind of here around the the um, little gnome house. All right, and then I'm gonna grab my light petal pink. Whoop, that's 700, that's not the one I want. So light petal pink, that's the one I'm looking for. And I'm gonna color in the base of the little gnome house. And as well as the underside of the mushroom. And again, I didn't worry a lot about, you know, making sure that everything was really expertly colored and blended. I just sort of got the ink on the paper um, because again, they're little background images and you know, they're cute. <laughs> so um, then I added dark petal pink for the top of the mushroom. And again, just kind of did a little tracing around the edges. Try not to go too crazy and color all over the little um, polka dots on the 
polka dots. I'm sure there's some word for it, but you know, the little dots on the top of the, the mushroom or toadstool or whatever you call it. Um, again, dark petal pink is what I'm using on the top part of it here. And then I've got the light fresh freesia. That's what we're gonna color in the little polka dots with, or dots, or whatever they're called. All right, coloring those in. And then I also took a little bit of the light fresh freesia and kind of colored underneath the, the um, bottom of the mushroom just to give it a little bit more contrast. And then came back in with my light petal pink and just colored over it a little bit to blend the two together. Um, so you can mix and match your colors a little bit if you want to do that, um, just to give it a little, little contrast, a little something different rather than always just using the same, you know, blending the, the pinks together, you can add a little bit of um, purple in with it as well. Then I used dark petal pink to put the um, little framing around the house, or around the door and the window, as well as coloring the little steps up to it. Oh, and I think I actually colored in the, the door handle with that as well. And then I used balmy blue for the flowers and the door, and that's it for the coloring on this. So almost done, thank goodness. Sure, you're getting tired of listening to me carry on. There we go. And again, light balmy blue is what I'm using here. And that's it for the door. And I did, I see, well, I was looking at it again here. I did put a little bit of the, the mint macaron kind of right underneath the door to make it appear as though it was actually grounded and give it a little bit of kind of the, the grass look around the, the um, house as well. All right, so we're done with the coloring on this. So like I said, pretty easy, not so complex so far. Um, then I've got a piece of petal pink cardstock that I've got cut to about five and a half by about two and seven eighths. And we're just gonna stick these two pieces together using a little stamp and seal. And we'll layer them on and hopefully get them on here straight. And then we're just gonna take that and put it right over the uh, card front as well with stamp and seal. And this thing, the main thing that I wanted to do was get it um, on the card front straight. Should probably take all the junk out from underneath here so I can actually see what I'm doing. And then um, get it on here straight and then even between with the, the purple, even on either side of the purple, if that makes sense with the even amount of the purple showing, I guess is what I, what I should have said. Um, so that was the main thing with the way that I stuck it together. So I've just added a little layer. So, oh, thanks, Melanie, I appreciate that. I've been having a lot of fun and these little gnomes are just too cute. So got my little boy gnome, my little girl gnome, and we're just gonna take some of my chopped up Stampin' Dimensionals. Um, I do cut my Stampin' Dimensionals in half right down the middle. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I know it drives some people crazy that I do it, um, but I prefer the, I like the size of them better. Um, I think they fit better in a lot of places and they are just as sticky as a whole stamp of dimensional. So you might as well just use half one and you know, spend your uh, dollars elsewhere. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm gonna peel the backings off of all of these. And again, all the details I'll be posting on my blog tomorrow and all these cute little things, this cute stamp set um, will be available beginning on January fifth from Stamp It Up's new mini catalog. Um, and don't forget that the gnome dies you can pick up now and get your free shipping with them if you order them on Thursday and put them in an order of $75 or more. So get the bundle, the current bundle with the gnomes. And, um, you know, then you can get the new ones as soon as the, the new catalog starts up. So, all right, so we'll stick my little girl gnome over here. She was over top of the house. So, oh, thanks, Roxanne. Actually, the colors came right out of the Designer Series paper pack. So I do that a lot with Stampin' Up because they, they have such good colors in their paper packs. So um, I usually just pull right from there and steal a lot of their <laughs> a lot of their color combinations because they're good ones. So I've got the... the um, little sentiment. What I've done is I've put a half stamp of dimensional on the left-hand side of it and a little bit of stamp and seal on the right. So you cut stamp of dimensionals in half. See, it's a thing. And either, like I said, it's one of those things sort of like the gnomes that people either love that and they do it forever or they don't love it and they don't. And it's okay either way. <laughs> so, all right. I'm glad you're loving the new gnomes too, Jan, because I think they're really cute. 
Now, final thing for the card front that I added was a couple of the opaque, oops, I guess I should put them on there so you can read them, opaque adhesive backed gems. And these are kind of hidden a little bit in the new mini catalog. They're on pages 12 and 13. They're kind of right in the middle of the fold of the page. And they aren't with any sweets or anything, so don't miss them. Definitely grab them. It's got white, fresh freesia, I believe that's Melon Mambo and Gorgeous Grape are the colors in it. Um, but they're on the page with the Share a Milkshake bundle. If you haven't seen them in the new catalog, go peek and you'll find them there. Um, but like I said, they were, they're kind of hidden a little bit in the catalog. So um, they make us hunt for them a little. So, all right. So we stuck three of those on, a couple around the little girl, one over by the little boy. And then... We're gonna do the inside of the card and we'll be all done for today. So the inside of the card kept pretty simple. I have just got a piece of basic white cardstock cut to four by five and a quarter and a little strip that I had trimmed away um, as extra. And I think this is probably closer to five eighths of an inch. I think my original one was probably closer to half an inch. Um, but, and it's oversized. It's definitely longer than what I need it. But for me, that's a little easier. Um, it gives me a little extra lever when I'm uh, moving things around to make sure that I stick them on here fairly straight. I like the new gnomes because they have eyes. Yeah, they are, they're really cute, like I said, and I, and I love that they coordinate with the, um, the current dies that we have, so that's always a nice little bonus too. All right, so I trimmed away the, the oversized piece, adding a little stamp and seal to the back of the cardstock panel. And we're just gonna stick that here inside the card base. And again, I used thick basic white for the card base. And then we're gonna flip it closed, do a little, little quick crease along the top. And that's it for today. So um, card I made ahead of time, card I made today. So, you know, like I said, turned out a little differently um, in the coloring, but that's how it goes. So <laughs> I Sorry, my, my phone just rang again. So um, I don't ever color exactly the same, but I try to get them as close as possible. So a little Valentine's Day card. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Glad y'all are liking the card. I appreciate it. Um, appreciate you being here. I will plan to be live around two o'clock Eastern time on Friday here on YouTube and then back again next week, Tuesday around two o'clock Eastern time. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Um, and uh, let me know if you have questions. Again, all the details will be on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com. So we'll see y'all then. Thanks for joining.